Hey guys, um, it's been a while since there's been a mirror update video. Um, there's been a few requests for people wondering how you sync uh, the hand posing. Um, I wrote a quick script, I don't know, a couple hours ago for a guy on Discord um, to help him out, and I figured I'd go ahead and make a video. I have been sick, so I apologize if you hear some coughing or something. I'll try to pause it if that happens, but uh, I'm going to do this as quick as possible, so hang with me. All right, so this video assumes that you're using the hand pose blender for your hand animation, which is the easiest way to do it with uh, Final IK. Um, you can find how to do that in any of my other Final IK videos. Um, I'll leave a link down in the description. Um, it shows you how to set up your local network rig, and I'm assuming that you've already followed uh, part one and part two of setting Final IK up with Mirror. Well, that being said, I've already written the scripts for this. I'm just going to show you how they work real quick. I'll leave the scripts in the description, and you can just put them on your rig, and everything should be copacetic as long as you have those two things going on. On your local rig, I'll go over that real quick. You have your avatar, which this is probably not going to match yours. It doesn't matter um, what rig you've got, honestly. Um, but on the hand... You have a hand poser, you have a hand pose blender, you have a hand controller. Um, a hand controller has the grabber for the local rig, and this is what's controlling your hand poses. You've already mode, made open and closed hand poses for your rig, and uh, you have your network transforms assigned. I will say these, you need to check them. If you're using a rig, sometimes it won't see these because they're not named correctly, and they'll be down here in other joints, and you'll have to pull them in manually. Um, but for most part, most of the time, it catches them just by hitting the button for auto assign. You're going to do this exact same thing on your uh, rig. I know mine has a car, but that doesn't matter. So let's come down to my avatar down here. This is on my network rig prefab. It's the exact same thing. So if I come down to my hand, you'll see I have the same thing. I got the hand poser, the hand controller. Um, you don't need a grabber. This is something I was messing around with. And you have a hand pose blender that has your hand poses already assigned. This is what we're going to be controlling to get that animation. So you have that on the right hand, you got it on the left hand. Okay. So if we go to our player controller, I have this script called Hardware Hand Pose. Name it whatever you want, it doesn't matter. Let's open that script up. The only thing this does is give you a place to assign your left hand uh, pose blender and your right hand pose blender. I'm setting these fields here and caching these values so you can see it actually working and then just getting my values from here and placing them in floats so you can see that I am getting the values from the grip, the index, and the thumb of those hand pose blenders. So if you come over here and you click on your hand pose blender, you'll see that's the one that's on my rig. It's on my left hand. I click on the right one, it's the one that's on the right. Okay. I've made this a static instance so that we can find it real easy from our network uh, prefab. When our player spawns in, it'll find this instance and it'll be able to grab these values. Okay, that's it. All you got to do is put this on your player controller on your local XR rig and then assign your hand posers. That's it. If you come into your network prefab, uh, come down to your root, whatever your root is. It doesn't need to be on your avatar. Just put it on the root of uh, whatever your prefab is. You'll see it's got the same thing. It's got your left hand and your right hand hand posers. It's the same thing, left and right hand. Um, this, I'll, I'll go over this in a minute. Um, you don't have to do this. This is where it assigns the hardware hand pose when it finds that instance. So make sure this is set client to server. Whew. Sorry, getting a little bit winded. Beaver's kicking, kicking me down. Okay, so or was I? Okay, yeah. Make sure this is set client to server. Um, now let's look at that script. So here, I don't want you to pay any attention to this yet. I've just I'll go over this in a minute. Here, this is just the hand pose blenders for the uh, for the network rig, your avatar, just like we talked about. Uh, this is just so we can we can cache the uh, hardware hand pose instance, which is this script. Um, and then we're just doing a thumb value, index value, and grip value for the right and left hand, and we're making them sync vars. 
And what a sync bar is, the best way to think about it is it's basically an RPC. Um, if you if you tell the server with a command to change this value, so like if, if this value was one and I wanted it to be zero, I would use a command to change it to zero, and then that would automatically sync to the clients. So it works pretty much just like an RPC, but you only have to do sync bar. That's it. Um, so you're just doing that for all those values on start. If I own this, um, because you only want to do this if it's if you own it, so your local instance. It's going to find this hardware hand pose, which is on your XR rig, uh, which is why we made it static. So it's just looking for the instance in the scene. There's only one, so that's the easiest way to do it that I've found. Um, this, I'll go over in a second. Uh, well, yeah, we'll go ahead and go over it. So if I own this, I want to run this, set input values. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a float um, for my hardware hand pose, which is... Yeah, you know, I better not get out of order. You know, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain this so I don't confuse everybody. Mm, yeah, I guess that's the way I'm gonna have to do it. Cause this is the last. Okay, so we're gonna run this if we own it. If we own it, I'm gonna create a float that equals my right thumb, uh, right grip, and right index of this script. So here I cache this instance. So hardware hand pose so I now have this cache so I know where this is at in my scene I'm now making floats for those values which are uh, these values right here so this is how I'm getting it to my network instance on the local side so once I have those values and we're gonna go over this in a second I did a couple of different examples of this I'm sending a command and passing those values as parameters. So I run this command and I pass those parameters with those float values, which are actually the values of what my, my uh, <clears throat> hand poser is for the right and left hand. And then I'm updating my sync vars from the command, I'm updating these sync vars right here. So I'm saying that this sync var is equal to this passing as a command. So when this updates that sync var, it updates it on the clients. Now that we have an updated value on our client, we can run this. So if we don't own it, so we don't need to update this locally because we can't even see the local rig. This is only for the remote rig. So if I don't own it, so if I don't own it, that means that it's somebody else's rig and this should be running. Um, it's going to update the pose blender of the network rig with the values of the sync var. So I hope that made sense. Um, pass it as a command. Update your sync var. Sync var gets turned into the values of our local hand poser. That gets synced across, and then we're making the, the values of our hand posers on our network rig equal those sync var uh, values. And that's how you get the update across the network. Now, that being said, put some notes here. Right now, if you just send this as a command straight across the board, it's sending every frame. So every frame, it's nailing your network with a command. You don't necessarily want to do that. Um, a couple of examples on how you can throttle this down. There is more than one way to do it, and I'm not going to show you every single one. I'm just going to show you two simple ways. So if you send it this way, it's going to be really smooth, but you're going to constantly be hitting your network. So let's ditch that, and let's do a timer. This might work for some, might not work for others. Maybe it's sending too often. So up here... I've just set a timer. So if you've been doing any kind of program for a while, you've seen a simple timer. I've just got a send interval, interval so I can tell how often to send. And then i got a command timer. So the timer's just doing time, right? And then every time when the command timer is greater than or equal to the command sent interval, it'll send the command and then it'll send the, set the timer back to zero. So now, since I've got this set to 0 0.1, it's only sending a command 10 times a second instead of every single frame which is probably smooth enough for most people if you're fine with it doing it that way. Now, here's an even more performant way to do it, but it's more long-handed. So, let's get rid of this. And we can set this up with a switch. This is a very long-handed way to do a switch with a bunch of if statements and everybody tells you not to do it, but hey, if it works, it works. So, this is set up for just the grip input. So now here what I'm saying, I came up here 
and I gave myself a bool, can update grip, and I set it to true. Okay? Its only purpose in life is to know whether it can send a command or not. So right here I'm saying if my right hardware grip value, so my grip value on my local, is greater or equal to 0 0.5 and can update grip equals true, then I will send a command set grip input 1. So instead of me just constantly sending, I'm going to send one command to set, and then I'm going to set can grip to false. So now as long as I'm holding in my grip, it'll only ever send one command and it'll just set it to one across the network. And this will not turn true until I let off. When I let off, it'll see that can grip is false. So then it'll send a command that says zero and can update grip equals true. The only downside of doing it this way is you don't have that, that smooth in between on your uh, remote, which for the most part is fine. Do you, do you really care? You know, you just want them to see that your hands closed or open. So for most, this is probably going to be a pretty performant way to do it. Um, <laughs> you could probably set some fancy stuff up with some switch, the Unum switch and all kinds of stuff, but I'm not going into that. But if you wanted to go through this, you would just set this, uh, set a command up. You need one command. It's just passing the value to that one command. This one's passing one, this one's passing zero. So you would just set up six different commands. And then every time you changed a value, like your thumb or whatever, it would send one command. But it would just be zero or one instead of being, you know, sent every frame. So I hope that makes sense. Um, that's it. That's how you do it. Um, I leave it to you to change this logic. Uh, to when and how often to send this. So <coughs> I hope that helps. Thanks. Have a good day.